can we talk about that bounce back get your body back yeah where are you why are you going backwards move forwards mm. we're moving forward you didn't have a baby so you could go back to what you were you had a huge transition this is a major movement you're moving forward you created a new thing Welcome. So we are here today with Sally Hayes. You're the founder of Women in Self Healing and you have been practicing massage therapy for over 20 years now, um, specializing in athletic recovery, but also pre and postnatal. And, you know, having an athletic background then led you to that. And there were a lot of opportunities there for women to really get healing and recovery. And so we're going to talk a lot about those myths today and misconceptions and things everyone can do in the support system to help women through pre, postnatal, and during pregnancy itself. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you for having me. Yeah, tell a little bit more about what led you to that specialization. So I went to the Atlanta School of Massage and I studied clinical sports massage um, back in the 90s. And I got out and worked in training rooms with athletes. And my very first client was pregnant that I worked with in my office. Um, she actually wasn't an athlete, okay. but I had an office. And then I also worked at the University of Georgia with their teams. And um, my very first client was pregnant. And then as pregnant women do, the next week I had, you know, yes. five of them lined up at the door <laughs> saying, I heard you did a thing. And so I've never been afraid of pregnancy massage. Mm -hmm. um, I was well trained in it. I have since studied other people's philosophies because there are a lot of different schools of thought. And it just became something that I always did. And I found that most therapists are afraid to work with pregnant women or, you know, haven't learned enough about it. So they're a little bit conservative about their work and athletes and pregnant women are going to take care of their bodies because they're doing something with their bodies. So they're not going to come in hungover and, you know, be like, I don't know what's wrong. Or, you know, if you tell them to do the stretch, they're going to do that stretch. Mm -hmm. They're looking for how to recover or how to work through the aches and pains or whatever's happening. Proactive, compliant. Exactly. Exactly. Best clients you could have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I particularly like working with women and women's health because I feel like women's health has been something that isn't at the forefront. A lot of studies have been done with men, mostly for generalized health. So, yeah. you know, that became a personal passion to advocate for women. And so pregnancy is generally in women, humans. So yeah, generally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and also it's such an area that there's certain areas of it that get focused on. So, you know, and there's a lot of misconceptions with that. So a lot of times people aren't prepping for pregnancy. There's an area of opportunity there to set yourself up properly for a healthy pregnancy so that you will be more comfortable during that process and then to continue to take care of yourself. And I think as we focus more on the fertility aspect, a lot of times it's like, Whew, okay, great, I'm pregnant. Great, we're, we're, right. we're done here. Now it starts. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> It actually was starting mm -hmm. way back before. Absolutely. And then, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on women to fit into a certain mold or maybe not talk about certain issues or certain discomforts that they may have during that process. Like I have patients who come in and they're so happy to be pregnant and so excited, but they're uncomfortable and they don't know what they can and cannot right. be doing. And they've heard so many different things from so many different people right. that, oh no, you actually, no, you shouldn't actually, no, no, you can't give them, no, you only can see this person. So what are some of the things you're hearing when patients come to you and you know their fears and hesitations with that and how do you kind of dispel those fears? It's a great, great topic. So first of all, I have no judgment for how people want to get pregnant, if they want to get pregnant, what they want to do during their pregnancy, how they would like to birth, because it's not my business, it's their business. I think you should get as much information as possible and then tap into your intuition, listen to what you personally need and make your own decisions and don't listen to everyone else out there because everyone has an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't have to do that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of judgment towards women and their bodies. I won't get into the whole, you know, legislation of women's bodies, but, but as we know, like, yeah, when someone is pregnant, uh, like the community thinks they're pregnant. So people walk up to them on the street and, you know, want to touch the belly or want to tell you, you know, when I was pregnant or whatever. So 
the very first thing that I do is make sure people are keeping their stress low and being very calm. And it's okay. It's all going to be okay. That's kind of the overarching umbrella I have with my clients. Um, the exercise is usually a thing like you're not supposed to exercise. You are supposed to exercise. Oh, look at the, you know, this woman ran a marathon nine months pregnant. That's great. She was a marathon runner. So that's great for her. Maybe don't take up marathon running and you're, but don't you think like, that's a key issue? Like people need months. to be educated that if this was your fitness level before, yeah, you don't yeah. need to then sit on the couch all day. Like your body's conditioned to that. Exactly. Now, if you never ran a day in your life, yeah. pregnancy is probably not the time to start. Exactly. Doing that, so. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and there are high risk issues, but we're talking about like generalized pregnancy that are low risks and healthy pregnancies. Of course you can exercise. Just listen to yourself. I would suggest seeking out people who specialize in pregnancy exercise, um, doing what you feel comfortable with, always listening to your body. That's, that's a huge thing. Um, can you get massage? Of course you can get massage. There's a lot of misinformation about whether or not you can even receive massage. It's perfectly safe. I work with a lot of high risk cases and generally I change the way I work when I work with people. I've had some extreme situations. And a lot of it is, you know, they may have to be in a recliner and I might just be holding some points. You know, we might just have a little hands on, maybe a little scalp massage, anything to keep the stress low. Mm -hmm. That is probably the number one thing through pregnancy is you want to just stay nice and calm. And I would think with pregnancy massage, like the specialization is key and the experience is key. Like you said, at the like some people as therapists are even afraid to approach that. So you know, even in the 30 seconds you just gave about different examples, it shows how important that personalization and that knowledge of, okay, what does this unique patient need? What does their body need from me as a practitioner right. is incredibly important. Right. And 90% of the clients I see are pregnant or postpartum. Okay. So when you work with a population day in and day out, you know exactly what to ask. So I know how to look at people and how to ask like, carpal tunnel we got anything going on how are you feeling and they're like oh yeah is that it's common it happens it happens sometimes in pregnancy whereas you might not have said that to somebody mm -hmm. and then if I'm going to position you in such a way I want to make sure to position you in alignment so that you're not you know crunching up and everything I'm going to teach you when you're on the table I use side lying mm -hmm. pretty much exclusively but I'm going to also teach you like some good sleeping positions that you can utilize when you go home yeah so those take home things are key. It's empowering for patients yes. to know what can I, cannot I be doing right. at home. And that right. key, you know, you keep going back to listening to your body. And I think that's something that's so underrated. You know, we are talking more about self care in modern society and particularly here in Southern California, it's a big buzzword. But I think the mindfulness that goes out the intention that goes into that it's very underrated like people need to know no one knows your body better than you exactly even me as a professional i know what my education tells me i have an understanding of the body but our interaction patient practitioner is really important because you know your body better than anyone exactly exactly and you know how you feel today so i see a lot of clients like week after week and each time i say how are you feeling today we feeling the same as we were last week? Is it different? Has it changed? Is it the same? Like we're having new conditions because pregnancy changes, but also like you might be having a really stressful day. You might need something different. You might feel really sensitive that day and not want very much pressure, or you might be feeling tight because you did something that you, maybe you had a little growth spurt and everything feels a little strange. So let's just take it, you know, for what it is in this moment and see where we can work with it. Well, and, on a physiological level, the hormonal changes that are happening are different day to day, week to week, month to month. And how you feel at one week in your pregnancy could be very different mentally, emotionally, physically. And then to have someone who's checking in, who's not judging that, I think makes a huge difference because a lot of women come into my office and they feel even if people are not judging them, they, like you said, the community feels like they're pregnant. So right. everyone has an opinion yeah. and there's a pressure on them to feel a certain way. Like right. I can't say I'm so uncomfortable or that I'm sad and I don't know why and every touch is bothering me right, right. now. <laughs> so to have a practitioner saying, no, let's just, let's take it today. Yeah, I think that would be amazing exactly. as a patient to come into that and feel like you're in a safe space and can express that right. and get some help Yeah, as well.
Yeah. And a little relief. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> you know, you touched on the postpartum. Yes. I think even more, and this is a personal opinion, I think even more than pregnancy, that is an area that is so neglected for women. You know, it's like, well, you already, you know, just birthed yeah. the baby. Oh, like the, the baby's out. Over. So if you could just yeah. go sit over like, there well, wait, you're, you're and let around, me hold the baby. Aren't you going to get those extra pounds off? Right. Like, aren't you going right. to get back to work now? Right. You know? right. Yeah. It's, it's a, what it's next? It's crazy. Right? <laughs> um, going to heal. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I was going to go with it. Yeah. 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 So I think there's a lot of pressure to like, all right, Absolutely. bounce back. What's Absolutely. happening? You know, get Absolutely. it together. And, and can we talk about that bounce back? Get your body back? Yeah. Where are you, why are you going backwards? Move forwards. Mm. We're moving forward. You didn't have a baby so you could go back to what you were. You had a huge transition. This is a major movement. You're moving forward. You created a new thing. You don't create a pain. I feel like we need to like take a moment of silence <laughs> on that sentence right there. But that no, that's so powerful. Right? Like, because how many times does right. that get said? Right. Would and you paint a portrait passion. and then go back and paint it over white? Oh, whew, finally, it's back to the canvas that it was like, wow. that doesn't even make any sense. Why'd you have a baby then? Yeah. You did a huge wow. thing. Let's honor that. Mm -hmm. Let's rest in it. Yeah. So what types of things are you doing as a therapist to support women who are going through that postpartum period? So postpartum is my big passion. Um, it's kind of my little like mini passion project yeah, in my life <laughs> um, because I do see a lot of women who uh, may have family come out, may not. Maybe, you know, if your family comes out, that can also be a trigger in that moment. I advocate prepping for the postpartum period. Okay. There, you can make rules for your family. You can sit down with your partner. If you have a partner or whoever your people are around you, your team and decide like, Who's going to do the dishes? Like, what's going to happen? What do we need when, if somebody comes to visit, can they visit? When can they visit? How long can they stay? What can they do? It's absolutely appropriate to give people chores. Yeah. Most people come in and they're like, I want to hold the baby. And that's the one thing the mom gets to do is hold the baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let her hold the baby. <laughs> Stop saying, you do, you do the dishes, <laughs> you know, support. But I, I say often, um, especially when I work with someone through their pregnancy, I say, I will come whenever you want, obviously with notice. Yeah. Because, you know, it's Los yeah. Angeles, it's hard yes. to get around. Uh, but I will come into your home and work with you. Give your partner my information. Mm. When you start getting really stressed, you're not going to be able to make an appointment. Yeah. It's going to happen at 3 a.m. Women right. do text me in the middle of the night a lot, which is fine. <laughs> but I'm not going to get back to you. This is when I'm having a moment. <laughs> yeah, like you're going to be feeding at 3 a.m. and be like, oh, I really, oh, my shoulders, yeah, from breastfeeding are yeah. locked. Yes, I need a massage. So let your partner know ahead of time this is something that's going to happen that you're going to need. Okay. That I think is very important. This is the part I think to like hire out, like go ahead and create an Instacart list for your groceries, have them delivered, get a house cleaner, hire a postpartum doula, have somebody come in, like lactation consultants will come to the house. Pelvic floor PTs are my oh, favorite. Amazing. Get a pelvic floor PT. Yeah. Do you have some good ones in LA? I am looking for them all the time. So usually my clients will say, this is who, how I, who I use and I will pass that off, but I don't have any good resources right now. There's, there are quite a few out there. There are, and I know so many in other cities. I just met a PT, well maybe we'll put her info in the link below, but um, yeah, it's, again, it's something that gets overlooked and that women are, I mean, beyond self-conscious about. Like, it's like an identity thing. Right. It's like, I, I don't feel like myself in my body. Right. And even if you do have that great mindset of, well, I'm looking forward, this is amazing. My body just created this incredible being, but still, how do I then feel like I'm back into my body or this new body? How right. do I experience that? Right. And is everything 
functioning optimally? You know, right. am I, I comfortable? You know, I've seen women who've had prolapses and then just dealt with it because they just felt like, oh, you know, like that's a side effect. And I'm like, but <laughs> there are things that can be done there. Yes. Um, and you yes. don't have to be don't ashamed suffer. of that. Right. Like there's no reason to Absolutely. suffer. Well, there's so many amazing resources yes. around us and support out there. Yes. There's no reason to. Absolutely. So. And it's going to change through the postpartum period, mm -hmm. you know, but I would highly suggest prepping for that period before you get there. Yeah. But take care of yourself. Rest. It's a healing period. Like that's the part where not only did you birth a child, but you're becoming a mom. Like that's a new role for you. So that's a whole thing to navigate. I mean, therapy is a great thing to do during that time too. Yeah. Make sure that you have a good network of support around you, whoever that is. Mm -hmm. That's my big soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> support, support, support. And if there are people who are trying to come around that aren't supportive of you, you don't have to let them. Yeah. That's okay. This you don't have is to take time. that on in addition to everything you're you're exactly. taking on with this new exactly. part of your life journey exactly. and this new person right. that you brought into the right. world. Now you got to worry about other people's feelings about that. As like, no, exactly, it's a good time, time to be selfish. Yes. <laughs> and actually, in the Ayurvedic tradition in India, they would do either. I think they did forty days where someone comes in and massages the mom every day and then mom massages baby every day. Oh, wow. So you're getting a very specified massage, it's Abhyanga massage and Shiradhara, different techniques. Mm -hmm. Those you would do every day for 40 days. Wow. Yes, with specialized diet and yeah. different herbs that are in the oil and it's pretty amazing. Okay. It's pretty do you massage. work with a lot of women from the like prenatal, pregnancy, postnatal? Do you usually pick them up in the postnatal? It's a little all over, over the place. Okay. It is all over the place. I generally might catch somebody in the first trimester. Usually it's towards the end of the second trimester. It seems that if someone's getting massage, they might continue to get massage through the first trimester, but there's a lot of fear about getting massage in the first trimester, so they might stop. Mm -hmm. And then second trimester, or in the first trimester, you're like nauseous and you're just not feeling very yeah. good. So you may not want anyone to touch you at that point. Second trimester, you start feeling a little bit better right. initially. And then towards the end, you're growing and getting all those like aches and pains and swelling yeah. in the feet and all the different things. So then you start seeking, what can I do? Mm -hmm. So usually the end of the second trimester is when I start seeing people. And then postpartum period, um, occasionally I will have somebody the, you know, through uh, a referral, the, you know, but it's usually coming. someone who starts in that typical second trimester. Once the fear is done and they're starting to feel the discomfort, exactly. and they're like I need somebody. Exactly. And then you follow them through to the postnatal, exactly. which is great. At least you get like that, you know, solid chunk of time and Absolutely. you educating someone the whole time to, you know, prepping for those things, exactly. I think is key because I'm sitting here thinking, wow, that's, I didn't even think about it. That's a great idea. You need to really make sure you have that to do. List. Right. A lot of pregnancy is just trying to get through pregnancy. That's what a lot of, you know, a lot of the information around it is like, let's get through pregnancy. Right. And then you, however you birth <laughs> is how you birth. Stops. And then where did everybody go? Right. What, how, what do we do now? Well, she so. had the cute baby. So yeah. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Okay, great. And what other um, modalities are you seeing being really successful for patients in during pregnancy and um, postnatal just as a good support? Um, or what are your patients doing? I have a lot of people that are doing kind of a, like a different set of things. I highly recommend acupuncture and chiropractic. Um, also yoga is really great. If you can find a, um, like a prenatal yoga yeah. teacher, mm -hmm. which is hard to find. Right. Prenatal exercise classes are notoriously hard to find. Mm -hmm. Also someone that's actually specialized in those areas. I don't know why there's such a lack. I'm sure they're out there. It well, just seems to be a secret. Of myths, like of things you can't right. do. So, so I think even if people do it, bit. maybe they're yeah. not advertising that they do it okay. for fear of like, you know, 
like, oh, this is going to be oh, California so litigious, <laughs> exactly, God forbid. Exactly. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of misconception around massage for pregnancy, like you spoke to earlier, for acupuncture, certainly. And I think everyone's nervous in the first trimester, right. but there's no reason you can't, with someone who's qualified, who's done the education, who specializes in this area, work with them all throughout before getting pregnant, during your entire pregnancy and after. And that goes for acupuncture, it goes for massage, it goes for chiropractic and for exercise as well. Like everything needs to be modified, you know, week to week, month to month, trimester to trimester. There's some cool little tricks that we all have in those different areas Mm -hmm. that maybe, you know, you wouldn't know that we're not like advertising week by week, this is what you're doing. But it's very interesting once you start working with someone on a regular basis, how you can work with them and, you know, pull out this is what you're going to want to do in this week. And, you know, around this trimester, this is what's going to happen. And you can see those themes and changes developing. Like everyone's an individual, but you're like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. I see a lot of people around month four going through this. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. You know, around like 36, 38 weeks, a lot of times people are like, oh, this is really hard. And it's just, I can't imagine getting any bigger. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, not appropriate to yeah. start talking about no. that. Oh, you're going to get real big. <laughs> it's going to take, it's going to take a while. <laughs> just go, okay, well, you know, if, <laughs> if and when, exactly. you know. So actually I did want to touch on the um, preconception period. Yes. We did kind of discuss that a little bit. I think it really is important to start early on, I do something called the Mercier technique, which is a gynovisceral manipulation of the reproductive organs. It's a six week period. So you do a one hour session each week for six weeks and that preps you for conception. It has an 83% success rate, whether you can see oh my gosh. In, by traditional means or medical means. That is fascinating. 83% success rate. So that coupled with I mean, as you know, acupuncture and nutrition and really getting prepped to, it's the same way, like, are you going to grow, you know, plants and fertile soil or are you going to try and, you know, have, let's just wing it. Let's do no research (laughs) on like what plants grow in what season, just toss the seeds out there and (laughs) hope something grows. Why not? If you're planning and planning down the road, take six weeks to get prepped and get your team ready and find out what you like and what you don't, you know, some women love chiropractic the whole time Mm -hmm. and never get a massage. Some are the opposite or never do anything until the very end. Whatever, just do your research. Yeah. That intro period really gets neglected as well. It does, it does. No, that's exciting. You can be doing all of these things through all of these times. Absolutely. There's so many resources out there. It's not something you know, you have to feel like there's no support or no help out there. There are plenty of different ways to approach this. So um, I want to close by just asking, and even if it's a recap of what we said, just some tips that like you would tell any woman who is thinking of conceiving or has already conceived or is prepping for that, you know, postnatal period, what are some good takeaways for patients? So in my experience, this can be kind of a spiritual 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 journey i don't know why i can't say that today <laughs> a spiritual journey that you take and so i would say the number one thing is tapping into your own intuition and really trusting yourself this process really is about becoming strong in who you are mm-hmm. number one outside of that keeping your stress really low calming down taking the pressure off of yourself like don't put so much pressure on yourself Yeah. and coming up with an intention or a mantra. Sometimes that will just get you through the day. Very simple things you could do. You can always take three slow, deep breaths just to keep nice and calm. Read all the stuff, take in all the information and take it all with a grain of salt. If it doesn't feel right for you, don't do it. That's it. It's not that dramatic. You don't have to listen to everyone and get bombarded with too much information, but read what you want and you know, that's a great life practice. So <laughs> if you can master that yeah. during all of the changes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. like conception, and yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Can't think of a better right. way to close. So before we close, I just want to end with some good takeaways for patients. You know, we've shared a lot of information, even if it's a recap, what are some good things women should keep in mind from that preconception into pregnancy and postnatal tips and takeaways? 
I would say the number one thing is to trust your intuition. So I feel like this is a spiritual journey mm -hmm. in a way. And it really is a teaching of how to tap into your strength and your intuition. So read all the articles you want, talk to everyone you want. Of course, that's all good information. There's lots of information out there. There's also bad information, but take all the information and take it with a grain of salt mm -hmm. and trust yourself. 100% trust yourself. That's the number one thing. Outside of that, I would say keep your stress very low. That's, you know, keep your peace of mind. Keep your stress very low. Don't put yourself in situations that are going to inflame you for any yeah. reason. And say no to things that you don't want to do. It's perfectly no fine at this time. <laughs> and create an intention or a mantra for each day. That can kind of keep you sane. You know, sometimes... When people are saying really dumb advice that you don't need or have asked for, you, you can just kind of go back to that silently in your head, take three deep breaths, mm -hmm. like just let it go. Yeah, I love that. And it's all good yeah. life lessons in there too. Yes. And in the <laughs> you know challenging time of pregnancy and postnatal, if you can master something like that, right. you'll be able to carry it with you for the rest of life. Like, exactly. no, I'm going to learn to trust myself and exactly. listen to my intuition and clear out the noise. That's exactly. <laughs> it's the hero's journey. So, yes. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Sally. I loved chatting with you and I'm going to come see you in a few weeks. Awesome. So, thank you so much for having me. Love chatting with you. Yeah. Let's do it again. Thanks so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.